viruses are tiny natural infectious agents that, whether you realize it or not, cause, are part of our everyday lives. Viruses often make headlines for causing disease in humans. You all at some point or another have heard of Ebola virus, which caused the deadly outbreak in West Africa in 2015. Polio, which causes paralysis and struck fear in the hearts of parents prior to the development of Salk's vaccine in the 1950s, and smallpox, the deadliest pathogen in the history of mankind. But it may surprise you that some viruses are being harnessed to be beneficial for humans and may be key tools in the future of treating cancers and genetic diseases. So what exactly is a virus? All viruses contain two essential components, genetic information and a protein coat. The genetic information is stored in nucleic acid, which is, can be either DNA or RNA. The nucleic acid has four base pairs, which can be arranged in different ways to code for different things. DNA is transcribed into RNA, and messenger RNA is translated into proteins, which have a large number of functions in our bodies. The virus makes proteins that form a protein capsid that protect the genetic information. Some viruses have an outer lipid envelope, which they use um, and acquire from the host cell that they infect. Protein spikes are used by the virus to adhere to and enter cells. Viruses come in many different shapes and sizes. Some are small and simple, containing only a few genes, while others are large and complex, containing hundreds of genes. Every organism on the planet can be infected with a virus. Viruses cannot replicate on their own. Instead, they must infect a host cell and use its machinery to make new copies of themselves. Viruses adhere to the host cell and release their genetic information. Sometimes, viruses will lay latent in the cell, not causing harm. This is where one type of gene therapy can occur, in which the virus delivers nucleic acid, telling the cell what to do without harming the cell. Once the virus is inside, it can then hijack the cell into making new viral nucleic acids and proteins. Sometimes, the new viral particles will lyse out of the cell, killing it. This is where another form of gene therapy can occur, in which the virus infects but selectively kills cancer cells. Viruses, the idea of using viruses as beneficial agents for treatments has been around since they were first recognized around the turn of the 19th century. Throughout the past 150 years, there have been numerous case reports of patients having brief regressions of their cancers during naturally acquired virus infections. Oftentimes, these patients had suppressed immune systems, which allowed the virus to not be killed by the immune system before reaching the cancer cells. In one early and widely cited example from 1904, a doctor named George Dock described a 42-year-old woman with a malignant leukemia that went into remission after a presumed viral infection. The 1950s and 60s brought an accelerated understanding of viruses. This was due to the advent of cell and tissue culture systems, which allowed for viruses to be grown outside of the body and the development of rodent models of disease. Many scientists and doctors studied viruses as potential agents to treat cancers and genetic diseases during this time. But genetic technology was not quite advanced enough, and viruses proved to be too elusive to be safely used as treatments in humans. This caused many scientists to abandon the field in the 1970s and 1980s due to limited success. It was clear that viruses had great potential for being used as treatments, but it, it needed to have their genomes be able to be stably and accurately manipulated before they, so that they could be better targeted to cancer cells without being destroyed by the immune system or causing harm to non-target cells. The age of genetic engineering changed this. In the early 1990s, Genetic technology became standard, and many 
uh, and, and many uh, scientists began studying this idea again. Gene therapy, genetic diseases and cancers are can sometimes be caused by a missing gene or mutated gene that causes harm. In gene therapy, a therapeutic gene can replace or correct the missing or mutated gene. Viruses can be used as vectors to deliver this therapeutic gene. Gene therapy can have several different purposes. Um, for one, they can be used to compensate for genetic defects. Cytoreductive therapy, in which cancer cells are, in, are reduced or stopped from dividing. Tissue engineering, in which tissues are, are engineered to, be, to function in a desired way. Or immunostimulatory, in which cancer cells are engineered to be destroyed by the immune system. In addition to using oncolytic viruses to kill cancers, viruses can also be used as vectors for other genetic diseases. Currently, there is active research looking into muscular dystrophy and cystic fibrosis for compensating for genetic defects. Immune disorders, such as severe combined immunodeficiency disorder, have already had great prior success in clinical trials and being treated by gene therapy. This idea of using viruses as friends culminated in the first commercialized oncolytic virus called Oncorin. Oncorin was a modified adenovirus vector, which was approved by the Chinese SFDA in 2005 to treat a form of carcinoma in combination with chemotherapy. In 2015, the U.S. approved its first oncolytic virus called Imligic, which is a modified form of the herpes simplex virus that was shown to be effective at killing melanoma lesions. Today, there are viruses in clinical trials from over nine different families in the United States, and viruses have moved into clinical trials all over the world. One clinical trial occurred at the U.S. institution that I spent last summer researching at, the Mayo Clinic. Stacy Erholtz battled a deadly multiple myeloma, a cancer of the plasma cells in the bone marrow, which also causes skeletal and soft tissue tumors. This, this type of cancer often overcomes the immune-stimulating drugs used to treat it, and it's rarely curable. She had tumors growing all over her body, she was out of treatment options, and she had a very grim outlook. She joined a two-person clinical study at the Mayo Clinic in 2013 and was injected with enough oncolytic vaccine strain measles virus to vaccinate 10 million people. After getting very sick for a day, her cancer completely cleared, and she, it has been manageable ever since. Because of this treatment, this woman is still alive today as of the time of this talk, over three years after the treatment and 12 years after the initial diagnosis. Viruses certainly have exciting potential as beneficial agents to treat cancers and genetic diseases. It took many scientists and doctors performing fundamental research purely out of the sake of curiosity to generate this, the knowledge that we have today to arm, modify, and target viruses. People from diverse backgrounds performing basic research were essential in driving this concept from impossible to realistic. Despite the remarkable progress that we've seen, and despite this concept being proven to be possible, we still have a long ways to go before it can be, have widespread impact on people. It will, it's going to take a lot to do this. We have to continue to, as with the rest of science, in order to drive it forward, we have to keep increasing opportunities for all people to engage in science, regardless of the geographic background that they come from or other factors that make them diverse. Many more discoveries are needed to be made, and much more work is needed to be done. For example, 
the oncolytic measles virus that sta treated Stacey Erholtz was not effective at treating cancer patients who didn't have as many antibodies for measles virus, and thus modifying the virus to be able to hide from the immune system while still not causing harm to normal body cells will be required. Both a shared respect for science by everyone domestically and the ability to form international collaborations to openly share ideas were important in the history of this idea and will be essential for making future advancements as we continue this story of turning viruses from foes to friend.